to everyone. My name is Anthony Haynes. I'm creative director at Frontinus Limited, which is a uh, research consultancy focused on communication. I'm delighted to have with me today as our guest, Inji Musa, who is uh, has recently completed her PhD in politics and international relations in, in Cambridge. Hello, uh, Inji. Hello, Professor. Thank you very much for having me. So, Inji, first of all, could I invite you just to tell us a little bit about what, what was your PhD actually about? What was your topic? Sure. Uh, so my PhD was entitled Outsourcing Security and the Reconfiguration of State Power uh, Post-Arab Uprisings. Uh, so in short, I uh, looked at the Arab region from 2011 onward when the uprisings happened, uh, looking particularly at the security um, market and um, tracking how different actors have been contributing to changes in the government system of different states. Uh, my focus was like my question was whether these actors have contributed to the re-establishment of authoritarian rule or the uh, helping pushing for democratization. I was uh, looking particularly at the private security industry. And my right. argument was more that uh, when you had an authoritarian regime in place, they actually manipulated and used the private security actors to re-establish authoritarian rule once again. I see. Thank you. And, and, and the, really, there are several aspects of your experience of doing that PhD that I'd like to explore. The first one is the actual process of doing it. And um, I, I thought what I would do is um, uh, throw at you a rather provocatively worded question and see what you want to say about it. Okay. The question is, am I right in saying that doing a PhD is just plain sailing? In other words, all you do is just decide on a topic and then implement it. Uh, in short, I hope it was. <laughs> From personal experience, it uh, it was completely the opposite. Uh, but to be to be fair, I think for most students, if not for all students, at least the start is clear and should be clear because you start from where you submitted your proposal. So you have an idea, you have developed an idea of what you want to research, uh, and a rough idea of how we want to go through it to implement it, as you that were used the word. But for me, it was a bit uh, of a different journey because uh, for some administrative uh, problems, I had to um, change my supervisor, change my topic uh, slightly because I was so passionate to my topic. And the word passion, we are, I believe we are going to touch upon uh, a bit later. Uh, but I was yeah. so attached to my topic that I didn't just want to give it up because of uh, broader context, uh, contextual uh, problems. Uh, so I kind of went into a negotiation process with my supervisor. What could we do to preserve my topic? Mm. Uh, he suggested broadening it up, looking at other cases. So from one case, I started looking at a whole region. Uh, so I spent the first year basically of my PhD learning about so many countries, uh, different aspects that I never learned about before. Um, so technically, I started my PhD from the second year, not the first year. Uh, but I would say that's a very uh, exceptional case. Um, but bottom line, definitely every PhD student journey is unique. The start might be roughly clear, but mm -hmm. as soon as you start, there, ha there will be lots of challenges, lots of difficulties uh, that depending on your initial state, depending on your capabilities, your self-discipline, mm -hmm. your motivation, who's helping you, where are you uh, uh, in your kind of knowledge-based um, scale, you will be able to deal with them differently. So it's a unique experience. Yes, it might go smoother than others, than uh, smoother than not for for some people, but uh, I would not expect to go uh, as a straight line. So I think what I'm hearing there is that you've got to expect there are going to be twists in the road and you just have to be able to adapt. Yes, as, and you have uh, to be very prepared for them. I would say yeah. that's what will make you like resilient yes. to to continue steadily until the very end. It's fascinating actually because when you said you studied an entire region, I think I, I was thinking when I first met you, I'm sure that wasn't what you said you were doing. You were studying a country, and that is, I thought I just misremembered it, but it shows that it had actually changed.